of the mercy of Jesus Christ. Oh yes, at the river of the We thank you for the bread and the water, Olga. We thank you for the roof of our heads, Olga. We praise you, we praise you, we praise you. We thank you for life, Olga. We ascribe glory, honor, and adoration to you. We praise you. Church, this morning, I want you to have a grateful heart. I want you to open up your mouth and praise his name. Praise him for the good thing that the Lord has become to you. What he has done for you. You know full well that if it wasn't for the Lord, things would not work out. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for my life, Lord. Thank you for the bread you have given me. Thank you for goodness, oh Lord Jehovah, that I have seen over my life. I thank you, King and Glory, for help. I thank you for the ability, Jehovah God, to create your life. Well, in this land, oh, we praise you and we bless you. Thank you, Jehovah God, for sustaining us, oh God. Thank you, Jesus. You have been our salvation. Praise you. Praise you, Lord. We sing to the Lord, we praise you. We praise you. We give our sacrifices to you, oh God, say. We praise you. The fruit of our lips, the, 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 the habitation of our hearts, Lord, we say. We praise you. You deserve the glory and the Amen. I pray that you are well, that the Lord has been good to you. Amen. Amen. Please turn to your neighbor and invite them into this house. Tell them it is good to see you in the house of the Lord. Amen. 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 We bless you. We bless you, Lord. The Lord is our light and our salvation, and we shall not be afraid. Amen? Amen. He is the lifter of our heads and the one who takes the shame away from us. Amen? Amen. Yeah, yeah. 
we plead the blood of Jesus upon the gates of this nation. Mandera, we speak to you. Peace be still. The blood of Jesus has quenched the, anna, the flaring arrows of the enemy because Jesus says it is finished in the name of Jesus. It is Jesus, the blood of Jesus that makes us white as that purifies our hearts and our souls. Oh, it is Jesus. Yes, it is Jesus. It is Jesus in my soul. For I have touched the hem of his garments, and his blood has made me whole. Let's sing together.
We have touched that hem of his garment on behalf of this nation. Yes. And our city shall be made whole in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. We bless your name, Lord. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Praise church. Amen. Praise God, church. Amen. 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 We're going to sing a song, Bwanamungu na Shanga Kabisa, but we are doing it fast a bit. So I'm kindly requesting the choir to, to sing the, the chorus so that you can be together with us. Praise God. Amen. Yeah, but they want to 
Habakkuk chapter number 3, we are reading from verse 17. Habakkuk chapter 3, from 17 the Bible says, Though the fig tree may not blossom, nor fruit be on the vines, though the labor of the olive may fail, and the fields yield no food, though the flock may be cut off from the fold, and there be no herd in the stores, Yet I will rejoice in the Lord. I will joy in the God of my salvation. The Lord God is my strength. He will make my feet, uh, he will make my feet like a deer's feet. And he will make me walk on my high heels. I also want you to turn to Luke. Luke chapter number 9. And verse 62. Luke 9, 62. Luke 9, 62. I got it right. Luke 9, 62. But Jesus said to him, No one having put his hand to the plow and looking back is fit for the kingdom of God. No one having put his hand to the plow and looking back is fit for the kingdom. Father, we thank you so much today. We are grateful for your love. We are grateful, dear Lord, for your grace, your mercy. Thank you for this opportunity to be able to share your word with your people. And I ask, dear Lord, that you will enable all of us to be able to uh, understand what this scripture is speaking to us today. And may you, oh God, help us to be the people that you want us to be in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Hallelujah. I'm talking to us today on possibility thinkers never give up. They hold on. Possibility thinkers never give up. They hold on. I've been speaking to us on uh, uh, possibility thinking and impossibility thinking. And today I'm addressing the subject possibility thinkers never give up. They hold on. And this message is uh, a bit difficult for me to start today because, um, you know, I don't know whether (laughs) the Lord is speaking to me, but um, I believe he always speaks to me and speaks to you. Why it is difficult? Because I'm talking about possibility thinkers never give up, they hold on. But yesterday, I was giving up on Arsenal. I, I am just... I'm giving up. I'm giving up on Arsenal, you know. And I believe it, has, <laughs> it is not connected to this one. God will have mercy on me there. That's why I'm saying it's hard because I don't want to apply this one when it comes to... Yesterday, we watched the match and um, my son, who does not support Arsenal, he told me, Dad, it is time. And I agreed with him. I said, now it is time. Okay. So those who are still holding on to Arsenal, maybe you are possibility thinkers. God bless you. Now when all things seem not to work, when you have tried all you can, and even when you do all you are trying, you are still facing the dark hour of your life. When things seem to be falling apart all around you, what do you do as a believer? You have turned to God, you have prayed, you have sought the face of the Lord, but it seems like things are still rough. The sea is rough. The day is dark and the night is darker. What do you do when you find yourself in situations like that? Now, Possibility thinkers never give up. They hang on in there. They hold on to hope. Even when hope is against hope, they hang on in there. 
But impossibility thinkers, when they find themselves in a situation like this, everything seems to be falling apart. The situation is dark. You know what they do? They give up. And when they give up, some of them end up with a bottle. Some of them end up with drugs. Some of them end up with a lifestyle that is not pleasing to them. A lifestyle that is destructive because they have given up on um, life. And they end up thinking, now I can just drink myself silly or, you know, get myself into this kind of a life style but I've come to announce to you today that is the scheme of the devil that is the plan of the enemy he always wants you to give up on God to give up on yourself he always wants you to feel like there is nothing to hope to because as far as the devil is concerned he has no hope for the future his future is already sealed the Bible says that hell has been prepared for the devil and the angels who rebelled in heaven hail was prepared for them it was never prepared for man but man who listens or entered or allows himself to be under or gives into the schemes of the enemy you end up in the same place so the aim of the enemy is always to try to discourage you to make you feel like there is no hope for tomorrow everything has fallen apart i can never make it again and therefore he tells you look at your life it is falling apart look at your business there is no hope look at your siblings they are no hope look at your parents look at your you know and he shows you only the the things that are not working he only shows you how life is hard and impossibility thinkers when they begin to focus on things that are not working they give up and when they give up the enemy starts the process of destroying your life slowly by slowly destroying your marriage slowly destroying your business slowly destroying your hope slowly but i've come to announce to you today as a possibility thinker because when god uh you know called you from darkness into his marvelous light, his aim is that you be a possibility thinker who will believe that with god all things are possible irrespective of how the situation look it doesn't matter how dark it is somebody said if you are going through hell don't stop keep on moving praise the name of the lord and there are going to be those times uh, that you look at life and it looks like you are going through hell but i've come to tell you today don't stop if you're going through hell don't stop keep on moving hallelujah keep on going because the lord knows uh, why you are going through why you're what you are going through and he has a solution he has um he has hope for you and therefore this is not the time to give in. This is the time to keep moving. This is the time to believe that God will see me through. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. You should never give up to the schemes of the enemy. When you encounter many defeats, you must not, I mean, you may encounter many defeats in your life. And I know that if, if you are uh, like me, you have flesh and blood you are not an angel you have experienced defeats you have experienced challenges in your life you may go through those kind of things uh, but you must never accept defeat when it comes to kingdom things uh, in fact it may be necessary for you to encounter defeat so you can know who you are what you can rise from and how you can still come out of the many things that you are going through there are times to stay put and what you want will come to you. And there are times to go out into the world and find such a thing for yourself. And therefore, when you are facing all these things, uh, it is time to dig in. Hallelujah. And to say, I will never give up. Somebody says, it does not matter how slowly you go as long as you do not stop. Amen. Many times we look at our progress and we feel like we are not moving. We feel like there is no hope. I am not making any progress. It does not matter how slow you go. What matters is that you arrive at your destination. Just don't stop. Hallelujah. And Nelson Mandela says it, is all, it always seems impossible until it is done. There are some things that look impossible in your life. But you know what? When you hang on in there to the Lord, you will always make it. Should you shield, um, shield yourself from 
all the things that, uh, you know, the enemy wants to bring you away, you will realize you will not be the person or that God wants you to be because the Bible says that God is in the business of making us. How does he make you? He makes you through the valleys and the mountains of life, the dark moments and the bright moments of your life. Those are the things that make you. And so God is in the business of making you. When he takes you through those things, um, he's taking you through them for a reason and for a purpose. And the purpose is that he may make you the person that he wants you to be. I know you may be facing mountains in your life that are so steep and so difficult difficult to climb but somebody said uh, if you want to move a mountain begin by carrying the small stones hallelujah carry the small stones one by one one day you realize you have overcome the mountain of life and so i have come to speak to somebody today who may be feeling completely and totally discouraged to get to the point of knowing that god is in the business of making you whatever you are going through has not been designed to destroy you it has not been designed to make you finished it is never over until god says it is over and therefore hang on in there because he knows and he understands what you're going through i know that um, some of you like me you know you went through some uh, some brief, brief shock you know during these past few days when I, when I got the news of um, uh, the death of Miles Munro and his wife and the team that was going to minister, I, I almost felt like I've gone back to, you know, a baby faith because I was there asking so many questions. Why? How? You know, how could it be? Lord, why let this kind of a thing happen? This man was just, you know, almost at the prime of his life. He's... Um, shepherding the world he's speaking into the world you know he's changing the world how can this happen and i kept saying what a way to go home and i you know i i was a bit uh, affected during those few days until i began to listen to some of the messages that miles Munro spoke and and looked like he was a man that was ready prepared any time and, and I got encouraged when he said it is good, you know, the, the opposite of what we believe. He says, it's good to die young, you know, when you are still strong. And he says, when you die and the work that you have been doing dies with you, you are a failure. And I know for Miles Munro, whatever he has imparted into the lives of people will keep on going and keep on uh, impacting lives and therefore you know i stopped asking those questions but i know there are times that we get into situations like that and we ask so many questions why is this why is this going on like this why is the lord allowing this one thing i know is that the lord knows the plans that he has for me and the bible says those plans are not for evil they are for good to give me a future and a home it doesn't matter whether i'm going through the, the dark valley I know he has a plan for me it doesn't matter whether I have it together or not he has a plan for me it doesn't matter whether things are falling apart in my life he has a plan for me and if that plan means uh, I go through the valley of darkness I say amen Lord I will dig in and I will stand there if the plan includes my suffering let it be if the plan includes uh, things falling apart in my life let it be because what I want most of all is that I align myself to the plans of God. I do not want to align myself to my own plans, my own ways, my own methods, my way of looking at success. I want to be in the plans of God, whether it is in the deep sea, whether it is in the dark valley. What is best for you and for me is to be in the plans of God because the plans of God will never fail. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. I read something about a flower called the lotus. The lotus flower, the petals of this flower open one by one. And um, this flower will only grow in the mud. In order to grow and gain wisdom, for us now, first, you must have the mud, the obstacles of life and its suffering, the mud speaks of the common ground that humans share. No matter what our stations in life, whether we have it all 
or we have nothing, we are all faced with the same obstacles. Sadness, loss, illness, dying and death. We are to strive as human beings to gain more wisdom, more kindness, more compassions. Then we must have the intention to grow as a lotus flower and open each petal one by one. Each day, um, you know, one day at a time. Hallelujah. So it doesn't matter the kind of uh, mud that you find yourself in. Uh, as far as God looks at you, he sees a lotus flower. He sees somebody that is going to blossom at the end of it all. Uh, opening up one petal after another. And I'm here to encourage you to hang on in there. There's a story of a Jew. Uh, during the time the, the concent, uh, concentration comes when Hitler wanted to wipe out the Jews and he managed to kill six million of them. During this time, they were put into concentration camps and they were awaiting their turn to die. You know, the story goes that uh, they will be gotten from the camp. Then they will be lined up to walk into a building that was called the shower. In that building called the shower, they have made some, some chimneys uh, where they will release fire to burn the bodies of these people as they walked in. So day by day, you know, people who are in the concentration camps, they will look at the people filed line by line walking into the building called the shower and they they describe those people who are walking in there as the walking dead because the moment they got into that building you know you now you begin to feel the smell of human flesh now there is one jew who was um uh, waiting for his turn. His name is never known. His face is never known because the only thing that was captured was the writing that he wrote on the wall, whether it was a he or a she, wrote on the walls of the concentration camp that they were in. And this is what this man had, uh, you know, uh, scratched on the walls of the concentration camp. He said, I believe in the sun even when it is not shining. I believe in love even when I do not feel it, I believe in God, even when he is silent. Hallelujah. Now, this is the faith that we need to develop as people of God. This is the kind of faith you need to be hanging on to. The man says he's waiting to die, but he's saying, I believe in the sun, even though it is not shining. I believe in love, even though I'm not feeling it. And I believe in God, even when he's silent. There are so many of us, when God is silent, it is time to pack and give up. It is time to get out, you know, of the folder. But I've come to tell somebody today, Please do not get into the schemes and the plans of the devil to make you get out of the fold of God. Hang on in there because the Lord knows uh, the plans that he has for you. They are plans for good to give you a future and a hope. And he's saying, now that you have put your hand onto the plow, you are not supposed to give up. You're supposed to dig in and, and just hang on to that plow. Because if you are the type that gives up and gives, um, you know, takes your, your hand out of the plow, he says you are not fit for the kingdom. And and this morning, I am looking at people that are fit for the kingdom. I do not want to believe uh, that there are people in this place uh, that are not fit for the kingdom because they have removed their hands from the plow. I want to believe that I'm talking to a people who have put their hands to the plow and they are saying, no matter what comes, uh, I will hang on in there. My hands shall remain on the plow and I will keep on looking on to Jesus, the author and the finisher of my faith. Uh, I will go through the darkness of the moment of darkness in my life but I will keep moving on why? because the God who saved me, the God who has sustained me this far he has not changed, the Bible says uh, he is the same yesterday, today and forevermore and if there are people that can die still speaking hope and I'm here alive I am here healthy, I am here strong, I am here endowed with blessings, how much more should I be shouting hope? How much more should I speak hope into the lives of people come on people of god and if somebody that is walking today can encourage you today it is high time that you also rose up from your financial struggle from your family struggle and still keep on speaking hope and keep on speaking faith to the people 
Praise the name of the Lord. The Bible says in the book of Jude, reading from verse number 3, the Bible says there that we need to contend for the faith that was given to the saints. Hallelujah. It is time. The Bible says it is time that we contended earnestly for the faith that was given down or delivered down to the saints. Do you know what kind of faith that was? It was the faith that said, you can throw me into the fire, but I will never leave the Lord. I can lack, but I will never stop praising Jesus. You can whip me up like the disciples and tell them never to mention the name of Jesus again. But the moment you let them lose, they still shout that Jesus is Lord. That is the kind of faith we need to be contending for. But now we have a faith that believes uh, only good things should happen to believers. When things begin to fall apart, it is time to complain and to grumble. That is not the faith that was handed over to us. The faith that was handed over to us is the faith that says, uh, Silver and gold I do not have, uh, but such as I have, I give unto you. In the name of Jesus, rise up and walk. It is not the kind of faith that says, uh, I must have this and I must live like this. I must walk like a child of the king i have come to tell you people of god it is time to contend for the faith and one of the way to contend for the faith that was handed down to the saints is to have believers who would be fired out of their jobs but they will still dance in the presence of the lord whose businesses will burn down but they will still say jesus is lord who may have losses in their lives but they will never sit there having a pity party they will say you can and take it all but leave me with my Jesus because what matters to me is that the Lord my God still reigns in my life that is the faith that was handed down to us to the saints praise the name of the Lord hallelujah I also read a story of a man that went into a concentration, um, not a concentration camp. He went into a, a leprous camp, the camp where the leprous people, you know, were, were, were put together. And in this particular camp, it was leprous people that had lost their sight. They were blind and they were leprous. And uh, they were being taught to read. And they were being taught to read Braille. So, you know, they were busy working hard to read Braille. But there was one particular man who, you know, blind and really wanted to read, uh, but he could not even read the braille because the disease had affected the senses of his fingers. He could not be able to, you know, to read with his, um, read the braille with the fingers. They tried for him to use his toes to read, but even the toes had lost senses. He could not use them. And therefore, you know, to, to many people around him, it was time to give up. It was time to know that he will never read again. But one day, this man says, I'm not giving up. So one day, it dawned to him that there was still some, a, you know, a portion of his body that was still sensitive enough. And therefore, he began to practice using, I mean, reading uh, the braille through his tongue. And it wasn't long before he could read properly using the tongue. Right now, you are sitting here you have two eyes you have ears that can listen you have legs that can walk you have a hand that can walk you have a house over your head and you have a job you have not come here hungry you have eaten some breakfast and if you did not you are going to eat good and you know what you are here complaining and feeling like oh things are not working oh you know God has forsaken me if a leprous person can still believe that it is not over I may not be able to to read with my eyes. I may not able to use my fingers to read. I can't even use my toes to read but I will use my tongue to read. People of God I have come to tell you you have much more than that leprous person never give up just because you are sick in your body don't give up just because something is going on in your life that is beyond your control. Hang on in there. Jesus is still Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. It should be a challenge to us when we see people who have nothing lost in God and saying Jesus is Lord. It should, it should be a challenge to you. Hallelujah. It should be a challenge to you that somebody 
who will walk out of their house. It is raining cat and dogs. They don't know how to get to church. But they are saying, come rain, come sunshine. I am going to church. It should be a challenge to you who drives. It should be a challenge to you who have access to means. Hallelujah. Because we must contend for the faith that was handed, delivered down to the saints. It was a faith that will not be stopped by rain. It was a faith that will not be stopped by circumstances of life. They were out there praising the Lord, serving the Lord, irrespective of what they went through. That is the faith the Bible says. It is time that you contended for it. Amen. And you know, if you continue to read that scripture, and I think I'm going to use this uh, for on Wednesday for us to pray. If you continue to, use, to read that scripture down, it says... For there are certain men or certain people who have crept in, who have sl slipped or crept into our midst with a false doctrine. They have come in to tell you, for you to know that you are really a believer, for you to know that you are really worshipping, you must be driving this kind of car, you must be living in this kind of area, you must be having all this kind together. These are people that have crept in, but the Bible is saying, contend, because these people are infiltrating, they are, they are trying to confuse as many people as they can, but it is time for you to contend for the faith uh, that may say it is breaking around me it is falling all around me but you know what i still believe in god i still hang on there in god uh, you know the kind of faith like shadrach meshach and abednego had that says you know you can throw us into the fire but the last thing we'll ever do is to bow down to a man and worship him because we believe in the living god i don't know what you believe in but i believe in the living God and it does not matter what comes uh, my way I will stand by God uh, and I will declare that Jesus is Lord irrespective of what goes on around hallelujah it is time to contend for the faith praise the name of the Lord most people who succeed in the face of seemingly impossible conditions are people who simply do not know how to quit hallelujah they are in a difficult situation, but the thing they just don't know is how to quit. They are battered. They are going through dark moments, but the thing they don't know is how to quit. They're hanging on in there. When the unexpected damage wrecks havoc with your dreams, is it time to throw in the towel? Is it time to say it is not working? Is it time to give up on God? I believe that that is the time for you to demonstrate to the enemy and to the devil that I am not in here for what I can get. I am in here for whom I can get. Hallelujah. His name is Jesus. I'm not in here you know, for the physical things. I am in here for the eternal. Hallelujah. I'm not in here for, you know, the, the pleasures of the moment. I am in here for the eternal joy that God has prepared for me. And you are not going to persuade me otherwise. That is the kind of life that God is looking for. Let me tell you today, all of us here... We have something in us. We have a substance in us that if only we could allow to pull out, we can stand anything. We can go through anything. Hallelujah. It's only that you have never known that you have this, you know, uh, a strength built inside of you. There's a pastor during the time of Adolf, uh, of, of, of Hitler who was, uh, he's a German, and you know, the Germans were supposed to hate the Jews. They were supposed to support Hitler in wiping out the Jews. But here was a pastor who was, did not believe in what Hitler was doing, and he was also thrown into the concentration camps, but actually, he was put into a solitary confinement. 
solitary confinement for years. Now, if you can stay in a room, you are confined, you don't know the day or the night, everyone seems the same. You lost count of whether it is Monday or Tuesday, whether it is uh, January or December. He lost all count. I mean, he is confined to this uh, one room alone for years. You know, they do that to you, you become insane. This man... You know, he survived that, that kind of condition and came out. And when he was being interviewed and asked, how could you stand uh, to, to, to be in a situation like that and never give up? The pastor answered and he said, a man doesn't realize how much he can stand until he's put to the test. And therefore today I'm here to tell you, maybe you're being put to the test to know how much you can stand. And I believe that you can stand a lot. I believe that you don't need to give in. I believe that you don't need to give up on God. I believe that you don't need uh, to throw in the towel. I believe that you need to stand up for God irrespective of what you are going through. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Only God knows, somebody said, only God knows how many good books have been burnt because somebody gave up before they could finish it. Only God knows how many inspiring ideas have been cast into the west basket because somebody gave up and never dug in. Only God knows how many great projects and programs and marriages have been discarded, discarded because the people in there gave up. And some of them, when it was the 11th hour, when the miracle was just around the corner, when the solution was just coming in, and you gave in and you gave up. I am here to tell you today, God is looking up to you to stand up to the wiles of the devil. He's looking up to you to stand up to the lies of the devil. He's looking up to you to contend for the faith that was handed down to the saints. The faith that never knew, you know, any kind of situation that would throw them back. That is the kind of faith um, that God is looking up to. I am here to tell you, I know life is difficult. You may sleep. You may stumble. You may get tired. You may have to sit down. But whatever you do, don't look back. Don't give in. And don't allow the enemy to discourage you to stop believing in Jesus. Hallelujah. For no man, having put his hand to the plow and looking back, is fit for the kingdom of God. We must, as praise chapel, be fit for the kingdom of God. And for us to be fit for this kingdom, we must not allow failure, defeat, to discourage us to the point where we have given up on our faith. It does not matter what you are going through. You are still a champion. Champions are people that have great holding power. Hallelujah. Great holding power. They will hold on in there. Even though they are going through whatever they are going through, they are holding on. Those are champions. And I'm here to tell you, you must be a champion for the kingdom of God by holding on to the plow without giving up. Contend for the faith that was handed down to the saints. Because in has crept men. Some of them are preachers. In have crept men. Some of them are singers. In have crept men. Some of them are, you know, believers who come to church. In have crept men who have come, you know, with a different kind of lifestyle or doctrine to show you this is now what we are preaching. And this is it. Uh, if you really, you know, believe in God and, su and succeeding. But I've come to tell you it is time to contend for the faith. Hallelujah. That was handed down to the saints. Uh, they were whipped but they kept on praising. They went through hell, but they kept on praising. They lacked, but they kept on praising. That is the faith that we must contend for. Praise the name of the Lord. Great men are ordinary people who just will not give up hope. Hallelujah. Great men are made of ordinary people who will not give up hope. 
they will keep on hoping. They will keep on believing. In fact, the Bible says that, you know, Abraham believed God against all old, and it was counted unto him faith. Hallelujah. And unto him righteousness. When you hold on to God, and God can see that you are not Given in to the wise of the devil. You are not given in to the pressures of the enemy. You are not given in to the lies of the enemy. It shall be counted unto you righteousness. Just like Abraham. And I know that there are people in this place. Who may be going through some issues. But that is not reason for you to give up. It is reason for you to keep on holding on to the Lord. Believing that nothing shall be impossible to them that believe praise the name of the lord hallelujah let me tell you this i've already said that many of life's failures are people who did not realize how close they were to success when they gave up. Many of life's failures are people who did not realize how close they were, you know, to realizing success before they gave up. Just because you failed once doesn't mean you are going to fail forever or in everything that you do. Amen? You must learn to believe. You must learn to hold on. You must learn to stick in there. Courage, many times, doesn't always have to roar. Sometimes courage is the little voice at the end of the day that says, you can try again tomorrow. Hallelujah. That small voice that tells you, tomorrow is another opportunity for you. Don't give up. Sometimes, even when to leave is an act of courage. Just the fact that I am willing to leave. Well, everybody is saying, you know... This thing is too much. I'm giving up. I'm going to die. I'm going to throw myself, you know, from a top building. I'm going to jump into the Indian Ocean. The fact that you can live, the fact that you can face another day with whatever you're going through in is self-courage. Hallelujah. It is contending for the faith. The difference between successful uh, people and others is not a lack of strength, not a lack of knowledge, but rather a lack of will. Hallelujah. The difference between a successful person and others is not a lack of strength, not a lack of knowledge, but rather a lack of the will. How much will do you have to live? How much will do you have to hang on in there? How much will do you have to go through, you know, the situation that you are going through? That in itself is success if you can hang on in there. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Everything that you go through, God has not, in, had not allowed it to finish you. He has allowed it to make you. He has allowed it to mold you to become the person that he wants you to be. You never know what's around the corner. It could be everything or it could be nothing. But you keep on putting one foot after another. One foot after another in the dark. You may not even know where you're groping. But you know what? At the end of the day, you shall make it to your destination if you will not give up. Praise the name of the Lord. God is looking for a people who can stand the pressures of the enemies, the wiles of the enemy, the struggles of life, and still stand up and say, Jesus is Lord. Hallelujah. Somebody said, if you fell down yesterday, stand up today. Don't say, I failed yesterday, I'll fall again. I lacked yesterday, I will still lack. I did not make it, I won't make it. It is time for you to say, yesterday is gone. Today is a present, hallelujah, it's a gift to me. And therefore, I will rise up again and be all that God wants me to be. Hallelujah. Let me finish with the words of um, the words of Nelson Mandela. Nelson Mandela says, I have walked that long road to freedom, 
I have tried not to falter. I have made missteps along the way. But I have discovered the secret that after climbing a great hill, one only finds that there are many more hills to climb. I have taken a moment here to rest, to steal a view of the glorious vista that surrounds me, to look back on the distance I have come. But I can only rest for a moment, for with, with freedom comes responsibilities, and I dare not linger for my long walk is not ended. Your long walk is not ended. But you know what? God is going to take you through there. Things don't go wrong and break your heart so you can become bitter and give up. They happen to break you down and build you up so you can be all that was intended for you to be. Let me read that again. Things don't go wrong and break your heart so you can become bitter and give up. Things go wrong, you know, so that they may break you down and build you up so that you can be all that you are intended to be. Hallelujah. Please stand on your feet this morning. And I want you to have a resolve. I want you to have a made up mind. I want you to have a resolve that is saying, it doesn't matter what I'm going through. Make up your mind. Make up a resolve and say, for me to live is what? Is Christ and to die is? I am not giving up and I'm not giving in. I'm going to be a possibility thinker. I'm going to be the type that believes that with God all things are possible. I'm going to believe that God can take my ashes and make beauty out of it. I am going to believe that I may fall today, but tomorrow I will rise. I'm going to, to believe is. that things do not fall apart in my life up. to break my I'm heart and finish up. me. They happen so that God can show me and make me and bring me to the intended place in my destiny. Lift up your hands and I want you to focus into your life. If there's anything that discourage you, discourages you today, make up your mind and say, never again will I give in to depression. Never again will I give in to migraine headaches. Never again will I give in to pity party. I want the Lord to help me one day at a time. And I want you to pray if you have any friend or relative or, or, or spouse or a child or parents or children that you know are depressed. They are going through some difficult time in their lives. They are just about to give up. This is your moment to lift them up before the Lord. It is your time to say, God, may you rescue my sister. May you rescue my brother who is just giving up on life. May you rescue my father and my mother who are giving up on, uh, on, on lack, on sickness, on, uh, on, on, on the struggles of life. May you help them, oh God. May they never give in to the enemy. May they not give up in life. May they keep on hoping. May they hold on there, Lord. I want you to pray. If not for yourself, pray for your friend. If not for your friend, pray for your sibling. If not for your sibling, pray for your parents. If not for your parents, pray for your children. You know somebody in your life is just about to give up. It is time to lift them up before the Lord and say, God, don't let them go. Don't let them give up. Don't let them be destroyed by the enemy. Give them hope, Lord. Give them hope even in the seemingly difficult circumstances. May they see the mighty hand of God. Thank you, Jesus. Blessed be your name because with you, we can go through the dark hours. With you, mighty God, we can make it to the very end. Even when we go through the fire like Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, there is still hope. Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, we are standing in awe of you today. 
Lord, some of us may be going through rough situations in our lives. We do not even know the A to Z of it. We do not know what to do, but we are looking up to you. You are our hope. You are our savior. You are our deliverer. You are the author of our faith. You can take us from this point to the next. I pray that we will not give in when we are in the dark valley. We will keep on hoping. We will keep on holding on. We will not give in even as a nation, Father. Even when we hear people are killed and maimed up in buses and in, in places of worship, we are going to stand up and say, Jesus is still Lord because you know, you know the plans that you have for this nation and the devil is not going to, to, to make us believe that he has too much power over us. We are going to stand up. We are going to believe in the Lord who is the author and the finisher of our faith. I pray this morning that you will encourage somebody. You will strengthen somebody. Let somebody walk out of this place with a new resolve, with a new determination that I will make it. Irrespective of what I'm going through, I will make it. Irrespective of the luck, I will make it. Irrespective of the pain, I will make it. Irrespective of the destruction, I will make it. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name. You may be here this morning and you are not born again. You would like to give your life to Jesus. Just lift up your hand when I see it. I will pray with you and Jesus will come into your life. Are you there? You are not born again. Or you are backslidden. You need God in your life. You need God on your side. Can I see your hand wherever you are? When I see it, I will pray with you. Jesus will come into your life and he will stand with you and help you. Are you there? Father, in the name of Jesus, if there's anybody in our midst that does not know you in a personal way or those that are backslidden, Lord, I pray that, Father, you will speak to them right now even as we leave. That, Father, you will strengthen them. That you will draw them to yourself. That they will surrender their lives. In Jesus' mighty name. Let's give the Lord a good hand today. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on. Is that the best you can do for Jesus? Is that the best you can do for Jesus? Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. We adore you and exalt you. Amen. My prayer is that God will give you so much resolve, so much determination, so much courage, that when the enemy comes to you like a flood, he will find you anchored, standing up, and it doesn't matter, he takes you through whatever, you are saying, I am not moved, hallelujah, I am not moving, I am not quitting, I am not, you know, giving up on the Lord, I will stand up for Jesus, hallelujah. How I pray that God will strengthen you. That whatever comes your way will not bring you down. It shall be a springboard to lift you higher in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Whatever is intended for evil, may God turn it into a blessing. Whatever the enemy has sharpened against you, may it never work against you. Hallelujah. May it propel you to greatness in the mighty name of Jesus. May nothing subtract from your life, but may there be ad, uh, not even addition, but multiplication in the mighty name of Jesus. May the blessings of God pursue and overtake you in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you, be gracious to you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and grant you peace. Amen. Give the Lord another good hand. Hallelujah.